Welcome to Book Snoop's YouTube channel. Today, I'll be reviewing Winter's Tale by Mark Halprin, a best-selling fantasy novel characterized by its rich and descriptive writing, as well as its unique use of mythical elements. It tells the story of a refugee in a fictional New York City consumed by cold winters. The protagonist, named Peter Lake, attempts to rob a mansion but instead he encounters and falls in love with a young woman named Beverly Penn. This love affair sets off a chain of mythical events which will irreversibly alter the fate of both Peter Lake and his city. This highly regarded novel is layered with complexities and is widely considered a classic of American literature. The writing itself is flowy and poetic, full of imagery and incredibly rich in its representation of the world which the author has created. The level of detail and description is both good and bad, often leading to very opposing responses from readers. Some readers find long, rich, and detailed works highly enjoyable, while others are left bored or frustrated with the slow pace of action and storytelling which results. This novel is highly focused on the sounds of language and words, and thus the writing draws a lot of attention to itself. As a result of the writing style, the readability of this novel is affected. The challenging vocabulary and wordy style make for a higher academic level of difficulty. The long sections of text, with spaces in between, are used in place of average length chapters. The average reader will sometimes struggle to stay attentive throughout a 50 page long chapter as opposed to a shorter one. Rather than being a simple read, this novel will certainly take more concentration than most avid readers can muster. The length and level of description also affects the pacing, making it very slow with long intervals between significant events that take place. Many readers will find the slow pace uninteresting and struggle to stay committed to the plot. The story, from the beginning, may seem to some readers as if it is not going anywhere, so to speak. The storytelling is not forefront in this novel as it is in others, with the focus being on atmosphere, tone, themes, messages, and the like. Things simply happen, and characters simply come together, because they do. This novel is mostly significant because of its quality and uniqueness of writing, as well as the ideas and lessons which are communicated. The book is full of wisdom and musings, which are largely scattered, slightly incoherent, and require much effort to fully grasp and appreciate. It is evident that this text is meant to provoke thought, and as a result, one cannot consider this a pleasure read. The characters, much like the story, are rarely overshadowed by the flowery writing style and thought-provoking messages. As a result, some readers will find the characters flat, uninteresting, and unrealistic, and may struggle to identify with them. There are also many characters to remember, which can be a challenge when they are not distinguishable enough to make an impression. The level of engagement with this novel will largely be hit or miss, depending on the reader. Many will value the compelling uniqueness of the work and the undeniable skill of the author, while many others will struggle with the apparent lack of attention to the story and its characters. The dialogue of the novel is where the majority of the lessons are revealed. It is simplistic and yet exhibits the same poetic flow as the descriptive passages. The setting is a true highlight of the novel and takes the spotlight as the center of the author's creative attention. This fictional New York City is layered with detailed and poetic description, creating beautiful imagery in the mind's eye of the reader. There is no denying the author's skill in this area, or his consistent effort to amaze readers with dazzling portrayals of the character's everyday surroundings. The plot itself, as part of an experimental work of literature, does not follow the rudimentary structure in the least. It is instead highly singular, with multiple moments of rising action, peak action, and falling action. With all commentary aside, let's turn to the rubric. Attempting to judge the novel as objectively as possible, I have given Winter's Tale the following scores. For quality of writing, level 5. 
For readability, level 2. For pacing, level 3. For story uniqueness, level 4. For theme slash message, level 4. For characters, level 3. For engagement, level 3. For quality of dialogue, level 4. For setting, level 5. And for plot, level 3. This gives the book a total score of 72 out of 100. You can compare this to the rating of 70 out of 100 on Goodreads. And now for the genre breakdown. For fantasy slash mythology, 5 stars. For drama slash humor, 2 stars. And for romance, 3 stars. My personal opinion of the book is very torn. As an educated language arts major and a highly experienced reader, I was blown away by the sheer beauty and richness of the writing. It is impossible for me to deny that Winter's Tale is a masterful work of literature. However, I found this novel going against each one of my personal preferences as a reader, and this severely affected my ability to enjoy it. Winter's Tale did fail my 100-page test, as nothing memorable even happened in the first 100 pages. On top of this, I struggled with the problematic, random, and pointless portrayal of love, with all characters having fallen in love at first sight. I have always had a dislike of books, which are 70% description and musings, and only 20% actual story. But in this novel, it felt as though the characters and plot were simply not worth the effort. That all being said, this novel is so complex that it is entirely possible that the author makes many of these choices purposefully and intelligently to draw focus to the singularity of this work of literature. In conclusion, Winter's Tale is one of those books that must be selected as a focused read rather than a pleasure read, as it can only be fully appreciated under effortful, careful, and attentive analysis. In the end, the book's originality, intention, and excellence of writing can make up for the flatness of the plot and characters. I acknowledge that this is a beautiful novel, but it is certainly not one for the faint of heart.